hello girlies happy saturday it is march 11th and it is 1 11 um and i am in my denim on denim era i'm in my denim on denim era okay i'm gonna show y'all the full fit um i wish it was warm enough to wear my denim skirt but whatever i'm wearing jeans but anywho i am dolled up because poppy and rose a black owned restaurant in downtown la invited me to go and have brunch with them and just kind of like share on my socials about my experience there how the food tastes all of that y'all know i'll be on a hunt for really good food out here in la so i'm really really excited to go and try poppy and rose um so yeah let's go let's go let's go i'm kind of running late i'm not running late I need to be there by 1.30. It's going on 1.15, so let me hurry up and show you how this fit so we can go. This denim jacket is from Aritzia. I love that I chose to go more oversized from their denim form collection. Here are the jeans, and I also have on my Zara boots here. Um, and I kind of have them like scrouched up at the bottom. I kind of like how that looks. I feel like the scrouch at the uh, ankle of the pants like really add like to the distressed look I'm going for. These jeans, I love them. I love the rips in them. I don't know girls. These pants hug my booty real good. <laughs> but yeah, this is the fit. I don't know. I just feel like it's been super hard to find like actual denim jeans that like hug us black girls, right? And so I found these. Um, shout out to Citizens of Humanity because y'all are getting the girls right. But yes, yeah, so I showed you guys the fit for fragrance. I'm still rocking my Prada and it's almost time for me to refill it. But I'm gonna go ahead and spray. And then I have my Aldo bag here that I'm gonna kind of wear as like a clutch. But yeah, girls, this is like the full fit and the red lip, baby. The red lip, come on. Come on! <laughs> the red lip, the red lip is doing it for me, okay? All right, let's go. We gotta go. Bye! to head over to Sephora. Fenty's new velvet lipstick. I need that. I need that. Here they are, all in their glory. However, they are all sold out. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try somewhere else, but these are the three that I want. I want Breadwinner, HBIC, the MVP, and honestly, I'm thinking about this one too, but I don't know, y'all. What do we think? These are the ones that I want to try so, so bad. So we're on a mission today to go find these in store because I need them now. <laughs> So 
so I made it back home from the gym and I went to Target. Everything that I got at Target was like things that I needed for my apartment. Honestly, I'm like tired of like holding off and not having what I need in my space. Out of all the apartments that I have moved into, I swear I just never felt like settled in my apartment. As in just like not ever really having like everything that I need, you know? So yeah, I went to Target, got everything that I needed. I do have to film for a Ness campaign. Um, so I think I'm gonna chop it up with you guys probably later this evening. Um, because I'm just like really busy right now. Like I gotta cook for myself. I have to make a lunch and dinner. I have to film and edit and submit today. Just a lot of moving parts. Um, but I just wanted to check in with you guys. And I have not forgot about date night, y'all. Trust me, I didn't forget to catch up to speed and give y'all tea. But just know, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Um, but for breakfast, I'm having my usual um, cinnamon, peanut butter, toasted bacon, egg bagel. <laughs> this is like my favorite meal to eat when I have like a pretty good workout. When I burn like probably 600 plus calories is typically what I would eat. Um, we got to get that protein intake for the juicy booty. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to have at y'all later and we're going to catch up. We're going to catch up. <laughs> Good morning, girls. Cheers. Happy Tuesday. I know, y'all. I did not come back on here. I don't know if y'all can hear. I'm, like, kind of congested. I was supposed to come back on here yesterday and chat about date night. <coughs> but that didn't happen. So after I filmed, edited, and submitted for my campaign, I went to bed. And I ended up ordering um, a chicken bowl from Tumadre. And while I was eating, I was just like feeling like just kind of weird, congested and whatnot. So I just like laid down, went to bed around like seven um, and woke up, took some Dayquil, still feeling kind of congested. Um, so I'm going to accept the fact that I have a little cold. I don't know what's going on. Definitely probably the weather out here because the weather in California right now is giving seasonal depression. And I would much rather move back to the East Coast and be sad because of the weather instead of being here 3,000 miles away from family. Um, but yes, so this is new for me to kind of like be under the weather and working for myself because I still have to submit um, for campaigns tomorrow and Friday and have to film this weekend. So I'm trying to figure out how this is going to work because technically I can't really take a sick day for something that I already agreed to submitting for in a deadline, you know, so definitely going to work through that as well. I did have some lemon and ginger grass um, tea lemon ginger grass no i did it i had some um ginger lemongrass tea earlier this morning as well and now i'm just drinking some matcha because i am kind of sleepy but i have on my coat and stuff um because i do need to go to ulta because when i went to sephora yesterday they were sold out of the fenty um matte velvet lipsticks um so i'm gonna go to ulta today and there's this one store i called and they have all of them in stock so i'm gonna go pick up the three or four um that I want but yeah I know it seems like I'm just like spending money spending money but like you also have to realize that I am a content creator and like all these things that I'm buying also does help me create just like really amazing content not only that but it's just like I actually like enjoy like buying beauty products also today is tuesday march 14th and the sephora squad 2023 applications did just drop and my talent manager is like pushing for me she's like i want you to apply 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 and i'm like okay like i don't know i just feel like when i originally started like just being on youtube and like just content creation overall like I was so on makeup and beauty and hair, natural hair. The OG girlies, if you know, you know, okay? And I still love all things beauty. I just feel like there's so much more to me. So I was nervous to apply to the Sephora squad a few years back because I felt like I was just starting to kind of like get my feet wet and really trying to figure out like what kind of content I want to put out into the world and so now that I feel like you guys kind of understand a little bit of kind of just like who I am and just like my daily life I definitely want to start infiltrating and including more of like hair makeup beauty fashion all the things so I feel like the Sephora squad if I get it would be like 
a super dope opportunity just to share more beauty content. Not only that, but I be feeling like in my living alone diaries, I don't be serving face. I don't be serving none of that, okay? So I feel like me posting more beauty is gonna remind y'all that I'm really that girl, that I'm really pretty as hell. <laughs> Let me stop. But okay, we're gonna go to Ulta and we're gonna come back home and film some content, edit content. We got our work cut out for us. So let's go to Ulta and do what needs to be done. Cheers. hello hello good morning happy monday it is a new week and your girl has just been busy creating content all the things i'm about to apply for sephora squad like it's a lot happening. I'm going to be speaking on a panel this week. I'm flying out on Thursday night. My friend Ace's birthday is on Wednesday. She's having a dinner Wednesday night. But okay, I know y'all probably like, girl, she's going to talk about date night. <laughs> it's literally been like almost a week and a half, two weeks since the date. But it, it was cool. It was good. You could hold a conversation. I was definitely intrigued and interested. We went and got vegan ice cream after our date and it was it was good it was very interesting because you know i feel like ever since i moved to la i've been kind of like operating in my masculine energy and so like i was nervous that like on the date i was kind of exuding that energy and not like being like dominant or anything but like it was little things i noticed when like whenever i got up to like a door i would like get ready to like open it <laughs> And he would like pull me back and he opened the doors for me. But I spoke to him about that like afterwards. He's like, no, like I don't think that you give off masculine energy. I feel like if anything, your aura is very feminine. And I was like, oh, that is good to hear. <laughs> um, but yes, another thing too that I really, really liked was eye contact. Eye contact is such a green flag for me. And this guy, whenever I was talking, he was all in. Just here, here, all in. <laughs> and I love that. I like how much passion he speaks with. Like when he's talking about things that he does and that he loves to do. Like that is such a turn on to me because I'm the same way. Like I love to just see people living a life of just like doing what they love. And it just feels really good to like know that I'm currently doing that in my life. And I met someone who's like also doing that for himself. So like that's pretty cool. <laughs> I will say that he is attractive. <laughs> He don't got my social media. I will not tell him my social media. I'm keeping it under wraps for as long as I can. I want to keep it just strictly like just me and you, okay? None of the socials, none of that. Just me and you. I don't want you feeling like you think you know me or you connected to me because you see what I post on the internet, you know? So yeah and he also just like hasn't like egged it on and been like what's your social media like when we met off the dating app it was on some like here's my number like um give me a call or like i'll call you it wasn't some what's your social media i'm trying to see if you pretty or not because you know how niggas be niggas be trying to be like do you got an instagram and really what that mean is i want to see i want to see how much I can know about you to see if I like you before I meet you. Uh-uh, sir. Don't play with me. Don't fucking play with me. <laughs> so he does not have my social media, which I like. Oh, his taste in music is pretty decent. I feel like we have like similar music tastes as well. I was like, oh, what you know about Van Jess? Like, what you know about all these folks? It was cool. It was honestly just like a really cool date at the end of the night. He was like, I would definitely love to do this again and go on a second date with you. Uh, uh, uh. So we definitely do have a second date lined up. Um, he's making it to the second date. I'll keep you girls posted. But yeah, that's the latest. That's all I got for right now.
Hey booze, happy Wednesday. It is around 4.30 and I'm all dressed up and my face is on because today is my girl Asa's 27th birthday. So she's having a birthday dinner at Castaway. So I'm actually about to go head over up to Burbank for the birthday dinner and celebrate my girl. I wanna show you guys the fit. Okay, y'all, so this is the fit. Um, I took my heels off because I'm about to dry, but if I take the teddy coat off, um, I just have on this cream off-white corset top from House of CB, and I have on my um, brown Molina pants from Aritzia. Um, let me show you guys the shoes. So the shoes are from Lulu's. I got them from an LTK showroom event. Um, but yeah, so it's like these linen kind of like off white heels. And I like love the heel on them, which is why I'm like wearing them because they're like brown. I'm going to throw on my Uggs to drive, but these are the shoes that I'm going to be wearing with the fit. And then for my bag, I'm just gonna wear um, this blush pink um, Tory Birch bag um, as like a crossbody situation. This is what we're looking like for perfume. I'm wearing my Marc Jacobs Perfect perfume. That's what's happening today. Yesterday, I went and got my nails done. You know I'm like a true French girly. Really can't deviate too far from a French. But yes, we got our Frenchies. But yeah, so this is how I'm looking. And I am just about ready to go. Got my hair in my slick back bun. For my lippy, because I know y'all gonna ask, I am wearing the Fenty Velvet um, Icon Lipstick. Um, and this is in the shade, I think it's Breadwinner. Yes, it is Breadwinner. I absolutely love this lippy on me. I'm like a true like chocolate deep brown like lip girl. I don't know if you guys remember like back in ColourPop days when like Limbo was like that girl. And ever since I discontinued Limbo, I was heartbroken so i feel like this is the closest thing we're gonna get to limbo and i think it's super cute on me and i just love a nice rich chocolate lippy but yeah girl so let's go ahead and take this drive over to burbank and celebrate my girly and have a good meal have good drinks have good vibes just all the things so i'll talk to y'all when we get there bye Stop. The vlog about to go crazy. <laughs> this? Stop. Wait, do it again. Yeah, make sure you project.
Yeah, that's Casey's. Hey, yeah. so were you in New York for Kimbo Oh. Kimbo. I thought you were in Woodlands. Oh, Noble Woodlands. That was a time, Woodlands? baby. The Woodlands era of Brooklyn? Crazy. Oh, Crazy. Yeah, yes. yeah, Asa. We out, Asa. We out. <laughs> My romance looks like it's just very spontaneous. And it's very like... I see him on the subway and the door is closed. And he opens it up. And, he, and it opens up and he like jumps off and like goes down and like comes to me like, hey, like I saw you look really beautiful. Like, what's your number? What's your name? Like, ah, ah. Like, that's my. Yeah. But then he's gonna be like, oh, I, I live in LA. I'm visiting. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That thought right there is dangerous. That yeah. thing is gonna wanna move. Okay? <laughs> Her husband, on the, on the subway, but he actually lives in LA. Oh, 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 right. Right. No, we're not made of us in that room. Right? We're not. Like, I don't even know why we. Like. <laughs> hello, hello, girls. It is currently 5:43, and today's supposed to be the day that I hop on my flight to go back to Connecticut to speak at the Sweet and Sounds convention. I'm excited, I'm nervous, good nerves, good vibes, good feelings, good juju. Um, but yes, and I have not packed a goddamn thing. <laughs> so I just wanted to come in here and chat with you guys before I started packing because there is something that is weighing a little bit heavy on my chest and um, I just want to share. <laughs> For a good long time, I have been depressed here in Los Angeles. This has been a hard realization for me to come to because one, it's something that I never wanted to believe to be true, but it's it's just it's just what it is. Now that I've left my nine to five and now that I am fully immersed in living my dream and doing what I love, I think that now it's time to literally take all of my life into my own hands and make shit happen for me and no longer sit here and feel like things are constantly happening to me. What I will say about Los Angeles is that for me living here, I feel like this was supposed to be the season in my 20s where I truly isolate myself and I put my head down and I do the work and I learn and discover the most raw and vulnerable parts of me. And it's been really tough. It's been really tough to sit and come to terms with the fact that I am healing from abandonment issues, you know, from my childhood. It's really hard to come to terms with the fact that I have a toxic attachment to my work, so much so that I will literally put my work before um, my family and my friends. And as a result of that, I have had to come to terms with the fact that I am no longer close with a lot of my childhood friends like some of my childhood friends are about to get married and I'm not even in the bridal party and it's just like that is no one's fault but my own and just being so immersed and mentally preoccupied just like with other shit that really isn't even that important in the grand scheme of things with all that being said Y'all know I just moved into this apartment, but I have officially started the process of connecting with my landlord to see what we can work out <laughs> and what's gonna be feasible for me to leave my apartment and leave LA. For those of y'all that have been on this journey to me moving into this apartment up until this point, y'all probably like, this girl, mm -mm, this girl playing with us, we don't trust her, we not messing around with her. But it has been a very emotionally charged couple months. I have found myself crying almost just like every other day, feeling this deep sense of sadness, feeling like I'm not living my best life, feeling like I'm not as connected to my family or my friends. And then with feeling not you know deeply connected with my family it had me going down the rabbit hole like do i truly know like who i am and just like my roots and just like where i've come from like my great grandmother is also just like dealing with some health complications and you know she's she's in her 80s and she might not be on this earth for a lot longer and that definitely shifted my perspective like wow like i had all these years with her 
living on this earth where I could have connected with her and just tried to learn more about like my ancestry and my roots things that really matter to just like who I am and my identity and just like my family and my lineage and like all those things are important and you know what's crazy the crazy thing is, is like I never would have come to all these realizations in these terms had I not gone through this season of isolation or this dry season of living here in LA and going through shit on my own like living alone here across the country from my family like when days get dark and days feel really fucking low like yeah you can call your girlfriends and you can cry to them and tell them what's going on but at the end of the day like that is your shit to carry and that is your your shit to fight through every single day so I will say that moving here to LA has made me so fucking strong I can't even be mad at it I know that wherever I go next on my journey can't nobody fuck with me or my mental health or none of that shit like LA has made me so fucking strong and I know people always say like if you could live in New York you could make it anywhere hell no if you from the East Coast and you could make it in LA mentally financially and you can make it out you can make it anywhere I'ma just say that <laughs> um but yeah y'all like this journey here in LA has been very trying I feel like I have such a warrior spirit and I really just wanted to continue to try and try and try and try and try and now I just feel like I gave it all I got and I just don't have anything left in me anymore to give this city some of you guys might be asking you know what did not like about LA and you know what I will say that the culture here in LA just does not amount to the culture in New York I'm sorry I hate to say it I think for me just naturally being from the east coast like there's just this energy about people from the east coast that you're you're not gonna find anywhere else i also feel like the black community here i feel like it's just been really hard for me to really find my people and really immerse myself into the community but not only that just more so like on a personal scale like y'all know that i'm into astrology and i'm also into astro cartography and if you have no idea what astro cartography is i highly encourage you to really look into it because it definitely says a lot about the energy in the environment that you're currently living in so for me um living here in california I am living on my Mars IC line which according to many astrologers um, living on your Mars IC line is probably one of the most difficult the most difficult placements to live under like by me living on my IC line like if you don't know your IC is technically the bottom of your birth chart it is your fourth house it is your home it is the femininity it's the womb it's your roots it's your most vulnerable deepest darkest parts of yourself um, that you wouldn't outwardly you know portray and share with the world right um, and so I really feel like spiritually I am going through just like this cleansing where I need to clear my spiritual house and I don't know if I would have been able to come to this realization at this time for a deep spiritual cleaning unless I moved here to my IC line. Um, I will say that living here and living on my Mars line in particular, it really has made me, you know, be ready and willing to take on challenges like living alone, like starting my own business, like working for myself, like dealing with just so many things just like on my own and I just realized that I'm in a time and in a season of my life where I want to feel held. I want to be able to pick up the phone and call my mom or call my parents, call my cousins. I want to be able to call them boohoo crying saying I need help and I need you here and it's not going to take an arm and a leg and hundreds of dollars to make it happen. You know like I want to be able to be like I can't deal with life right now so I want to take a step back and I want to go retreat to my family I want to go retreat to my friends you know I think being on the east coast like I'm just able to move around more like it's just been really hard for me to kind of move around and explore more here in LA like it's just been difficult but I miss being able to be like you know what I'm gonna go back to Connecticut for a weekend and see my grandma so I'm gonna just hop on Metro North and go see her then I'm gonna go back to the city and then maybe I'm gonna go to Atlanta and then maybe I'm gonna go to DC and then maybe I'm gonna go to Maryland like you know like I miss just being able to like just kind of move like 
I'm a mover, I'm a shaker, okay? At my core. <laughs> um, so yeah, y'all. I'm also leaving out a, another piece here. If you watch my Atlanta vlog, I share with you guys a little bit more about this guy that I was talking to that was from here. And I don't know if you guys caught it, but I definitely mentioned in there how like part of me like wants to stay in LA because I think that things might work out between me and this person. Um, Newsflash, it's not working out. <laughs> I talked to my parents about this and I was like crying to my parents. Like I feel so dumb. I feel so fucking stupid. Like why would I choose to halt my joy or my happiness to any degree or capacity for a guy, you know? And that was also a hard realization for me to come to because I couldn't believe that like I let myself get to that point where I would let a man come in between my mental health and doing what's best for me and I think that speaks volumes to the mental space that I've been in since I've been here in LA to those of y'all that are watching this don't ever not e not even just one percent make a decision based off of another guy don't do it don't do it you will not be better for it. <laughs> I mean, you'll learn a lesson and you'll know never to do it again. But if you can save yourself, hear me out. Hear me out. Um, but yeah, y'all. So I need to get to packing, but I just wanted to come on here and share that with y'all because it's been real. I have cried almost every other day for the past three months and I'm tired of crying and I'm tired of pretending that this sadness that I feel is just for the moment it's just temporary and i realized that girl this ain't gonna be temporary if you continue to keep yourself in the same position we gotta do something about it you know i had to move my camera because the sun is doing a lot back there but i really just want y'all to understand i'm in my 20s and i'm really trying to figure this shit out and for some people it looks like maybe moving to a new state falling in love with it and everything is peaches and cream but somebody else, it looks like moving an apartment five times in the same state and then realizing that this state just ain't working out. So you're gonna leave as soon as you move into another apartment. <laughs> That's me. I don't ever want to portray that my life is perfect. Whether you love my content or not, my life is not perfect. And I've accepted that my life is not perfect and I've accepted there is beauty in the darkness and there's beauty in the light. And I'm just trying to appreciate the process, okay? You know my girl SZA, what does she say? In that song learning to grow without hating the process that's me right now y'all know that's my girl this is about to be a really big turning point for me it's the start of Aries season it's the start of a new astrological new year and it's time that Amani takes her fucking joy back and she takes her life back this is not to say that if I move back to Brooklyn or I move wherever that all my problems are gonna go away or that all my sadness is just gonna vanish no that's not the case and I'm very aware of that but I know that the first step is getting out of an environment that I just no longer want to be in. plane I went straight to my grandma house and slept so it's currently like two something 220 and I need to get food in my stomach um it's one of my friend's birthdays as well today so tonight she's having a birthday dinner that I'm gonna go to 
And yeah. We gotta this, put on the show. This is my uh, first time being on that channel. Okay, so, <laughs> um, okay. My name is Mame. It's on Jackson, and this is my aunt cousin Mommy. This is my Jax. <laughs> my drama queen. Wait, yeah, girl. I am yeah. like a, a drama queen. Yeah, you are. You be watching Netflix? Yeah. All right, let's watch something on Netflix. Okay. Oh, Cartoon Network? Does that work? Um, watch, let's watch Courage and Cowardly Dog. On the uh, weekends, um, I uh, do like a morning routine. So, um, a morning routine? Yeah. What do what you know about a morning routine? Tell us. First, I uh, wake up in the uh, morning. Mm -hmm. And then I um kind of watch my own tablet. Mm -hmm. And then after I'm done, I um, brush my own teeth. Mm -hmm. Don't cry. mind that? No, cry. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a nap queen. Okay. I'm a nap at any any inconvenience. Any minor inconvenience, I'm taking a nap. Oh, my God. Watch. You're going to watch this vlog, like, 10 years from now, and you could be like, what was I talking about? I love me a nap. Watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This side behind you. Okay, thank you. You too. Hey guys. Clearly, I ran to my hotel, got dressed in my makeup, and I'm in a rush because I didn't even get ready with y'all. But um, the co founder of the convention, her birthday is today, and she invited me to her birthday dinner. So we're about to go celebrate her, have drinks, have food. And yeah, so. Can I be <laughs> Matchy, matchy. Hello. You guys are matchy. Here's a video. Oh, okay. I hope y'all don't go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's go. I'm not in it. No. Goodness. Oh, I forgot my. Uh... Let's do it. It's, it's honestly not that easy. Don't think about it. Woo, happy birthday. Okay, everybody's coming up. All right. Everybody looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight is about Angel. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we're thankful that everybody's here to celebrate your life. All right, kids, come on, Cheers. 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 I literally just drove from there. You want this way or just this other way? No. This way? You need to practice though. So that way they put the cameras like on me, I don't like, you know. No, it's okay. You don't need to do that for anybody. Do what? Pinky was white? You don't know. Are you going to be so annoyed when you see this video? <laughs> Oh, the Tahoe's are big too. So. And, and they have no one. We got six kids all together, so we have three. Oh, yeah, we're rolling, yeah, oh. rolling deep. Yeah, oh, we got you out <laughs> All right, babe. Thank you.
girls happy saturday today is the official day of the convention and i'm literally getting ready right now um it's 202 my panel doesn't start until 6 p.m so i'm gonna go run and grab some lunch and then i'm gonna head over to the convention um i'm super super nervous but also just like good nerves like good feels like i can't believe that like this is really my life right now like i get to speak on a panel about my career and my journey thus far and just like doing what i love like that's just so fucking like dope to me like i'm really living out my dreams right now and i feel like i still just need like some time to still just kind of like process all of this like wow like go me it also just feels really really good to like be back home back on the east coast like last night i linked up with my friend cam who was actually moving um to arizona um so it was really really good to catch her before she dipped off we had drinks after angel's birthday dinner like i just had a really good fucking fun time and i have not had a fun ass time like that like in a very long time since i've been like living in la like what the hell like i just feel like my personality just like unfolds and just like flourishes and just like blossoms so much better here on the east coast like i don't know what it is y'all it's that astral cartography okay because that mars ic line up in la be having me just like heads down and work okay like i don't be having much time to be like having fun and shit like that like I don't know. The girls that know what I'm talking about with astral cartography, you know, you know. Another big thing that's happening today is my mom, my biological mom is coming to the convention and this is gonna be my first time seeing her in person after like maybe three or four years. Like that's fucking insane okay um and i'm just so excited to see her and just fucking hug her like it's been so long like she's been missing me real bad i've been missing her real bad and i just feel like it's just it's time to just really like let this be the year where like we really just like heal and like we just work through our shit and we just like move the fuck on like life is too short I know that things take time and you know this new season for us might not be perfect but at least like we're both willing to try and put in the effort and just like see how far you know we get so I feel like that's honestly just like all that fucking matters and I'm like just really really excited for this new journey together wow <laughs> it's just been so long you know um and she gets to watch me like live out my dream and like talk about my passion and my dreams like i think that's so fucking cool the weather today here in connecticut is actually super gloomy it's giving la weather all over again and i just cannot seem to escape the rain but you know what we're gonna make do with what it do today is still gonna be a great fucking day um so yeah i am just like excited overall i just wanted to check in with you guys since i've been here and just let you know my feels what's happening what's going on what's the emotion <laughs> really excited to be back on the east coast i'm really excited to just like start to prepare to move back to the east coast like i can't even believe i'm saying that out loud because like wow like i'm finally like making it happen for myself and i'm no longer making excuses and thinking of reasons why i should stay like i'm really trying to like just essentially take my power back you know so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and finish up my makeup and i will chat with y'all once i finish up my makeup and my hair and it's time to get dressed because i want to show you guys the fits you guys probably seen the fit on the gram before but since I paid for the damn clothes, I ain't got no problem in repeating my outfit, okay? Bye! Okay, girls, so we are dressed. You can't see my face, but you guys can see the fit. Y'all seen this on one of my IG reels already, and I don't care. Um, so this maxi cargo skirt is from Local European. I have on these um, Aritzia knitted um, black and white crew socks. And I have on this Aritzia black, I don't even know what kind of material this is, but it's like a nice soft texture, um, oversized black button up. So I kind of just like tuck this in, tucked it in from the back. And 
yeah i like love this look i feel like it gives posh i feel like it gives clean it gets put together <laughs> let me know what you guys think and then for shoes i'm wearing my zara patent leather um chelsea boots i just feel like i like the texture of these boots with this fit and then for bag i'm gonna wear my black aldo bag y'all i need to start investing in more bags i can't just keep wearing the same ones um but my wardrobe is just like so neutral that like this bag just like essentially goes with everything so i'm gonna wear this bag and then for coat to add some more texture to the fit I'm going to wear my Target Houndstooth jacket um, it is cold and rainy here in Connecticut today so yeah we're gonna have to throw this on I'll probably take it off when I'm at the convention but this is what I'm gonna put on when I'm outside um, but yeah so this is the look hope you guys like and this is the face okay so for lip combo we did the mac chestnut lip liner and we did the fenty um velvet icon um, matte lipstick in the shade c sweetheart i just love this like pinky nude matte combo especially for the weather today um but yeah we got the slick back bun going okay okay it's giving like sexy teacher nerdy <laughs> but yes that's my vibe that's my flow that's how i'm looking i'm feeling really really good i'm feeling really really excited i'm about to go and grab some lunch and then we're gonna head to the convention and then you guys are gonna see some clips of me on the panel so i'm so so excited i will see you guys there bye so you want to get out i could just get in <laughs> <laughs> a track for me to just like be a teacher or like be a doctor like I didn't really think that there was a lane for me to kind of like be a creative um and so I started to go to New York City a lot and just like see what was out there and then I realized like oh my god there's people out here that like do this thing that like I wanted to do when I was younger how do you deal like you know internally with uh kind of the algorithms and technology is kind of your friend and your foe like uh, depending on what you're doing so you know how do you navigate that like dealing with those algorithmic changes all the time and trying to find what's the best platform or you know is it having your own website and just having everything up there like you know there's there's a lot of moving parts to that too and I think sometimes we underestimate that when we see content creators and what they do so if you could just speak to that a little bit more I'd love to we'd love to hear that. Yeah, I feel like being a content creator, you're also like a content strategist for yourself. So you're trying to figure out, do I do more short form or long form on TikTok? Do I take my content over to YouTube? Do I post on Instagram? Um, but I think it's just like really important to, like I said before, just stay really true to your vision and your craft because Instagram will say, oh no, today we want to deprioritize reels. We want to start, you know, posting more um, photo carousels. Like those need more, to, like static images need more to us than video. Um, but I think for me, sometimes you just have to like block that out and just like do what you feel has been working and like getting that feedback from your community. I think it is really important and try not to pay so much attention to the algorithm and listening to like what your community wants from you. Um, I think that's where you're going to see like the true engagement and for me as a creator I think engagement means so much more to me than a video going viral because I feel like that's also how I got my highest paying brand deals. They care more about my engagement and the link clicks and conversions versus like oh yeah this video got a million views. A million views is not giving a brand a million dollars, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I think it's just really important not to get too caught up in like what's trending at the moment and just like staying true to why you're here in the first place and what kind of message you want to share. I think if you have something of value to say, don't try to cut it down or bite it down into like some dancing video or just like a quick bite. You know, I feel like if it's gonna be long form, then like just do that. I feel like 
like there's space for everyone to do whatever they want on the internet and not try and just like fit into like what's trending at the moment. So, mm -hmm. um, but I realized that instead of trying to take on all these brand deals, if I had stayed true to creating content that I loved organically, that would then put me in a position to uh, probably have to only take on like one or two brand deals that would like compensate for like all these five or six that I took on. Me now being in a position where I do have like this platform to talk about my mental health and seeing the feedback that I'm getting, I think it's just very important um, to not feel like you need to like dumb down yourself just for like the algorithm and just like really try and continue to be like or have that warrior spirit to continue like talking about your journey because there are other people like who are fighting like silent battles and to like always think about those people um, when you are sharing your story and that your story does matter. That's how I think of my community. Um, I always think about like myself and how like I was once a girl who was scared to kind of like seek help. Um, and it didn't take until I saw someone else doing it to be that, you know, for me. So I definitely just want to continue to be that champion for a lot of young black women who are dealing with, you know, depression or whatever it may be. So. Mm -hmm. Um, no, Yale is kind of like we're kind of like in the center oh, of right Yale. Oh, right here. They go to the beginning. Remember, I told you Yale is on the outside, uh -huh. right here. We in Yale. Okay. Yale is right here. The so you can see the front side of it. Okay. See, look at it. I can't really see very well. I told you in the front. See, look at it. Oh, that's all Yale right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, don't it look like Harry Potter? It does look like Harry Potter. And look, this the other a, side. A lot of it looks like Harry Potter. Mm. Girl. Girl's been a day. A good one, though. <laughs> So it is the end of the day and I am exhausted. I am back in my hotel room with my red wine. My auntie had a whole bottle of wine in the car. She said, yeah, girl, it'll be nice to just take this bottle of wine up into your hotel room and just have a nice, you know, a nice night. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am exhausted. I'm back in my hotel room. It was so amazing seeing my mommy and my auntie. I'm just so happy that my mom was able to just come and just like learn more about what I do as a creative um, but yes I am so exhausted I'm still feeling the jet lag um, I'm about to go ahead and edit this YouTube vloggy because um, I still want to stay consistent on YouTube and yes I love you guys good night cheers Good morning, girls. I am literally about to submit my Sephora squad application. I literally cannot believe that I'm about to do this right now. Eee, Sephora squad! Oh my god, y'all, we're about to do it. We're about to do it right now. I'm about to check these boxes right here. Right here. <laughs> and we're about to submit. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> girls we submitted our application holy shit wish me luck